I'm going to fold this paper in half. It's a nine by 12 piece of construction paper. And I'll fold it in half so that it doesn't take quite as long to do. And also I can then send it to somebody as a gift. It's always nice to receive a painting in the mail. This is good for shape because it is a circle. So Paul Clay is representing the head as a circle. Now you can see, I am not getting a perfect circle right off at the beginning, but notice my technique is very intentional. I am using the technique I call the wrong mark, helps me find the right mark. So I just get into it, I just start, and I don't waste a lot of time erasing, but my, my technique is that I draw lightly because then there's very little oil pastel down until I know I like the piece, uh, the, the shape the way it is, and then I'll add more color to make it more real. And the very light application in the places that I don't want the color, those will uh, be easy to cover up, no problem at all. So I don't even have to erase, which is really nice when you're using oil pastel because you kind of can't erase it. You can scrape it off and you can layer back on top of it, but you don't want to use an eraser with oil pastel. All right, so notice the shapes we have an almost perfect circle, a square, and a rectangle at the base for the head, head, neck, and shoulders. Let's start to subdivide. I see not quite halfway, a line from here to here, and about halfway, top to bottom, from here to here. This is about a third of the way down, maybe a little bit lower, maybe about there. And then there is a line this line here extends to that mouth line, the parting line of the mouth. There is a rectangular shape here. And then that heads at a very slight diagonal, barely there diagonal, to about here. When it changes direction, ooh, I'm noticing this lines up. It's as if these two lines are the same line, but there's a little zigzag in it right there. All right. And this is where the eyes come in. One eye here and the other eye here. And these curves are very slight, gentle curves. And then these two curves are a little more aggressive, a little stronger, like that. And then there's a line that goes at a gentle curve from here to here. Another one from here and it just sort of fades like that. Let's make this eye a little bit bigger. Like that and like that. And like that. This one I notice is lower than this one. I might need to go a little bit wider here. There we go. Right there, like that. And then above this eye is a triangle like that. Okay, now you'll find as you do these artworks that your piece is not exactly like the reference. Neither is mine, and that's okay. In fact, it's it's really important to just accept that as part of the process. If you are perfect, perfectly perfect, if that's your goal, it's going to be really hard uh, to be happy as an artist. <laughs> um, because it's kind of impossible to be perfect. Yeah, I like to try. I like to aim for perfection when I'm looking at a reference. But for example, when you when you compare my map to, and this, by the way, is the map, the, the uh, underdrawing to the painting. When you compare mine to the reference, you'll notice, I think my features, the eyes are a little bit small compared to Paul Clay's. Now, I could try to make some adjustments to that. So let's see. Maybe I can go a little bigger this way and maybe... I can go a little bit bigger this way so I can get a larger eye. There we go, keep this one a little flat. There, yeah, that's a little bigger. There we go. All right. So that's the mapping. I think I've got all the parts to the map. And now I'd like to show you my technique for painting in. It's a technique called scumbling. And you might think it looks like scribbling. And in fact, it sort of does look like scribbling. So when you start like this, if you stop and you don't keep going, it'll look like a scribble. But if you keep changing your directions and going over that same space, it will end up layering and you end up crossing over 
the missed spots and filling those in and you end up getting a beautiful painted look. Now the reason this is useful is because you can layer colors. So I'll show you. Oh, I'm seeing something missing in my map. That right there. Go ahead and add that little shape there. So you can layer colors. For example, I am going to show you a layering technique right now. So I've started a scumble and you can think of scumble like a bumblebee. Do you know how when you watch a bumblebee move, it sort of looks like he doesn't know what he's doing, right? It almost looks like they're scribbling in the air. But they are, in fact, very purposeful. I am, too. So it might look like I'm just going all over crazy willy-nilly. But I'm actually thinking about I see an open spot and I cross over it. I see an open spot and I cross over it. And here's the layering that I was talking about. We can come in and scumble some yellow over the top of this white and blend that together. And you can take the white back over again. And they end up blending beautifully. There we go. Let's get some red. I'm noticing we don't have the mapping completely done. In the eye, there's a red circle here and a red circle here. So we've used all the basic shapes, haven't we? Circle, square, rectangle. And Paul Clay even gives us a triangle. Let's adjust this shape a little bit, a little broader there. We can paint this in. And we've got some yellow over here. So notice I'm skipping around the painting, moving from one place to another, adding layers as I go. And I'll even paint the background in. When I get closer to the end, I will show you some finishing touches because you'll notice that the eye is going to blend as I paint. It'll kind of disappear into the background, but the details that I add at the very end will make those eyes show right back up again. Now it's time to come in with some finishing touches. We can use background colors to carve up, carve out the background to clean that up a little bit. And I believe we have some of this warm yellow and our orangey colors sitting in the background. So if you have a few of those in your palette, you can use whichever ones you have. I'm using a combination, maybe even a little bit of this stronger yellow right here. And I'm taking that and just scumbling, but maybe a little less coverage maybe a little less um, completely uh, than I did in the background, or uh, sorry, on uh, the figure itself. And I'm just using that, again, like carving, as if I was carving wood or modeling clay. I'm adding some to the background to clean up around the figure and make that more like a circle. So that mapping that I have down, see how I just cover that right up? Anything that wasn't where it was supposed to be. And there is a little kind of back and forth in the, um, the figure to the background with the original piece with our reference. You see a little bit of white here or there, so I'll kind of drop that in. And maybe a little more yellow, yellowy orange. Now be careful, you don't want to outline. So I started drawing a line here, but now I'm going to scumble or wiggle my way out away from it. Do you see that? Now it's no longer outlined, but I still have the benefit of that neat edge. So think edges, not outlines, when you're painting around something. Your reference might have lines, but in our case, uh, not exactly here. So I'm scumbling out into the background there, 
And because we use the paper that matches the background, we don't have to do a lot to accomplish our goal. Let's see, a little bit more of this warm kind of gold over here. And let's go back over to this side. And again, we're making these unnecessary or no longer needed marks go away. They were necessary at the time when we made them. They helped us find the right marks. But this is effectively how you erase. So it's sort of like erasing. With oil pastel, we just cover it up. So nice orangey kind of color out in the background. And I'm not pressing very hard. I'm being very gentle so that I don't have strong marks in the background. And I'm going to simplify the background a little bit. I'll have less detail. When you look at the reference, you might want to add more. For example, I see that Paul Clay did some beautiful orangey, uh, sorry, purple colors out here. I'm going to leave those out today just to save some time. Let's go around. I see some glowing, maybe the stronger yellow over here. And again, I'm stumbling. Think of that bumblebee motion. And we've got some of that up here. And let's make it look less scribbly. We're going for painterly. We're painting, not scribbling. We're also not really coloring. We're adding color, but I like to think of it as painting. There we go. All right, now look how in doing that, we really neatened up the background and connected it to the piece. All right, now one thing about oil pastels is the white can sometimes be a little weak, and that's just because we're using student grade tools. So we can try to add a little bit more, but it'll be kind of gentle. All right, now when you look at the reference, oh, I, I do see, hold on a little bit. Let's, uh, this is called glazing. Let's add a little bit of purple to darken up this right there. Oops. Try not to lose the shape of it. And I just did, so now I've got to make it a little bit bigger than the reference. All right, now you can come in with a beautiful eyebrow. If you look at the reference, you'll see it's thick. So I'm using the, the black oil pastel, but then it goes thin. Oil pastels, look at the size of that. That's as big as my finger. That's as big as my finger. So it's going to be really hard for me to get it as thin as the uh, reference shows. So I'm going to switch to a pencil and use a little bit of a broken line. Not too thick and dark, keep that thin. Let's do a little tiny bit of line work toward the nose. There we go. A little bit here, not too much. And this is how we'll define the eye. I'm using a light sketchy technique. It's going on a little bit thicker than the reference. And you can see I am going to take this opportunity to change my shape a little bit. And down here, put a little shadow on my video, I'm sure, like that. So wherever I see Paul Clay has done a very thin line, I'm adding that too. There we go. And you can already see that mine is not exactly like Paul Clay's because I'm not a photocopy machine. And if I have permission to be close enough, you also have permission to be close enough. We're not in the business of making it an exact copy. There we go. And now we'll bring in some focus into some of these details. There we go, where else do we need that? I think that's pretty much it. If you want to tighten up a couple things here or there on the reference, you might see, but don't overdo it. We don't want to go around and add outlines everywhere. That's going to take away from the painting effect. And if you overdid it, you can come in and throw a little bit more pastel on top. Cover that up a little bit. I think I see a little bit of orange in the eye. Let's get that. There we go. Okay, so that gets you pretty much the plan here. So you can tighten up this too, very little bit. I want that to be slightly more defined. Again, don't trace an outline around it. Look how very little I needed to create that triangle separation there. Okay. All right, boys and girls, thanks for joining me today and uh, enjoying a beautiful painting. And I hope that you go the extra mile and write a message or mail this to somebody.